Hey everybody, I've got a great video for you today because I'm out here at the Overland Expo Mountain West and we are comparing two of the hottest new vehicles which are about to hit the market. The new Toyota Land Cruiser and the new Lexus GX. And in this video, we're gonna compare and contrast and talk about which one you should buy because there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about here. A lot of big differences on what is a vehicle that shares the same platform. So let's start with the Land Cruiser. Now, I was at the launch of this vehicle in Salt Lake City. I have a video over at TFL Car if you want to see all the details on this vehicle. But this is actually my first time seeing the first edition. Uh, when I was there, they had the 1958 and the top trim Land Cruiser. But this first edition offers some really attractive features. And we're going to take a look at those in person. Now, this is, of course, much smaller than the outgoing 200 series Land Cruiser. Internal designation on this vehicle is the 250 series. It also has a much smaller engine. So the 5. 7 liter V8 has been replaced by a 2.4 liter turbo made into a 40 horsepower electric motor. So it's a standard hybrid. Total system output is 326 horsepower and the torque 465. And we're going to compare and contrast that to what Lexus is doing with the GX. Now, Visually, a lot of old school design elements that have made its way into the Land Cruiser. And this first edition is a very attractive package and I'm excited to see this in person. So there are two different headlight designs, which I'm told are interchangeable, but the, uh, the, the 1958 in the first edition has the round headlight. There's also a square one, which is gonna be on the upper Land Cruiser trim. The round headlight's the way to go. And look at this front end design, right? Very modular, so you can see separate, big separation uh, between the front quarter and then of course, the front bumper nice and chunky and it looks pretty modular so for bumper manufacturers I'm hoping unlike the current 4Runners and the current GX right you're gonna have to do a lot less trimming of sheet metal and sheet plastic to get a winch and that kind of thing into the front of the uh, Land Cruiser now the first edition does have the Michelin LTX trail tire 265 70 R18 wheel pretty small wheel off road tire, not very aggressive. I think that's gonna be something I would probably change pretty quickly if this was my vehicle. And then the first edition has that integrated rocker protection, which I haven't seen yet. Nice tubular design, looks pretty beefy. I'm not sure if it will offer much um, assistance in stepping up into the vehicle, but it will certainly help protect those door cells, which is nice. Uh, you can see solder axle, independent front suspension. Not a lot of ground clearance in this vehicle, like eight point, I think it was 8.7. 8.8 inches of ground clearance, somewhere in that territory, if I remember correctly, which is, you know, Subaru levels, about an inch less than the 4Runner. But um, first edition cues also include the roof rack, nice slim design on that roof rack, and this also has a leather interior. And then making your way to the rear, you see the standard tow hitch, chunky tail lights, does have the swing open glass, which is cool, and then Land Cruiser first edition mud flaps. Yeah, not a huge fan of those, especially with that little check strap. It's kind of odd, but um, that's easily going to be removable. And then the two-tone um, white over, over tan is gorgeous. Really, really into that. Now, um, pricing. Toyota hasn't officially announced pricing. They're saying mid-50s, and um, I mean, I would expect that probably first edition is going to be over 60 just my hint hunch. And the Toyota folks have also said that the first edition is coming to uh, market first. So unlike <clears throat> Gladiator, the first edition is actually gonna be first and uh, not gonna be behind some of the other vehicles. So overall, I'm digging this. I really like that roof rack. Let's get a, let's get a side profile shot of that. Nice little aero profile there. Good fuel economy too. So when it was at the launch, they didn't tell me the fuel economy. And then a bunch of you guys actually reached out and said Toyota had published it on their website. Not sure if that was an accident or a miscommunication, but 27 MPG, right? Pretty damn good, especially compared to the current 4Runner. Very, very impressive. Let's see what the underbody protection looks like in the first edition. Big chunky skid plate. You got recovery points there. Ah, looks pretty good. Nice, uh, nice kind of swept up front end too to help with the approach angle. What about the underbody over here? Um, looks like maybe we got a skid plate there over the engine. Trans still seems very vulnerable. I was kind of hoping the skid plate would extend further back on the first edition, right, with the off-road tires, but that's interesting. Now, unfortunately, I tried to convince them they wouldn't let us get inside this vehicle, but I do have shots from Salt Lake, so you can see what at least a 1958 looks like on the inside. So uh, let's cut to some of that footage now. The rear situation. You've got a dual opening rear gate, so you can start by popping open the lift um, the, the rear glass there, if you want to like lift over smaller items, groceries, that kind of thing. And then, of course, the full rear gate does swing open. It is a vertical lift on this new Land Cruiser. 
pretty tall lift over height. So we've got a little bit of additional storage there, which I'm liking. Kind of just going on exploration tour with me. I'm not sure that this lifts up. Um, and then of course you got your view blocker here. But what are we missing back here? No third row. So no third row is available on the new Land Cruiser. So this, this is one of the iconic Land Cruiser traits that they are missing on this vehicle. Um, if you look dating all the way back for, I know the 80 series had it, I think the 60s did too, and certain versions of the 40s did as well. Um, the third rows would fold down from the side of the, uh, the panels here at the rear portion of the vehicle. And then you had two seats and they were, this is like an iconic trait. No third row is gonna be available in the States. Now abroad, I'm told the third row is, because this is a vehicle manufactured in Japan, which is gonna be sold around the world. And you see reminiscence of that in the rear portion of this vehicle because you still have cup holders for a non-existent third row. Now, I do find that to be pretty useful, right? You're out camping, you've got lots of stuff in the back, you want a secure place to put your bottles or your drinks. It's a great place to do that, stick them in the cup holders. I also like this too, I do like the lift open gate. A um, little bit more of a pain for some garages, but it means that when you're working back here, you got a nice place to stay dry if you're dealing with all sorts of rain. All right, Cole, let's take a look at the interior because lots of big surprises on the interior of the Land Cruiser. Now, as I mentioned, I wanted to focus on this 1958, the base trim. And the first thing you notice, the seat design is extremely unique, almost like a wool design, a texturized, um, not a traditional cloth like I was expecting. I find the seats, initial impressions, I'm six feet tall, pretty narrow. I find the seats to be very comfortable. Manual seats in this car, good amount of movement backwards. So even at six feet tall, you know, I've got tons of room. I think if I was six three, six four, I'd still have good room. Really good headroom in this vehicle as well. So one of the benefits of designing a square vehicle, tremendous amounts of headroom as we see uh, here in this 1958. Uh, interior materials and plastics. I mean, look, lots of black materials. I see, you know, the dash is a pretty a flat black material. Not a lot of contrast on this base car. And let's see if we can get power. Curious if it's gonna, this is um, just a static display, right? So it's not a final version of this car, but let's, let's, let's boot it up. Latest version of Toyota's infotainment system located here. This base car, 1958, has an eight inch screen. You can see where the screen would be bigger if we had the upper trim Land Cruiser. That's a 12.3 inch display on the tall one. You got your driver user settings. You got Apple CarPlay, you got Android Auto. This system is used in many, many Toyota vehicles now from the Crown to the Tacoma to the, the new Tundra, right? Pretty standard in, in it, the way that works there, but um, pretty, pretty good system overall. Volume control as well, physical volume control. Below that, Dual air vents, you spin these little knobs to adjust the air vents, feel good, feel really, really premium. Dual automatic climate control, and I'm even seeing here, heated seats and a heated steering wheel, which is quite nice. There is a premium package available on the Land Cruiser trim, uh, but not on the 1958. I know that's confusing, but you just, you just gotta go with it, right? So the base car is the Land Cruiser 1958. The midline is the Land Cruiser. The top line is the Land Cruiser first edition. So just get that in your head because it took me a while to get that. Now below that, we've got three USB-C ports, a couple of blank switches, and I'm loving this uh, mode selector here. So we've got this little toggle, spin that to go between eco, sport, and normal. Um, here we've got your drive mode, uh, I think, I'm not really sure what that button does. I'm gonna have to ask the Toyota folks what that does. Um, we've got our electronically controlled second, so that I believe starts the eight speed in second gear. And then we have crawl control here in this vehicle. Um, and then upper end trims also get multi-terrain select. But, uh, oh, I see what this does. So I think what you do is you, you actually can cycle this, this knob so you can go between drive modes or crawl control selection on that mode select. Pretty sure that's, that's how that works. And then, like I said, upper, upper end Land Cruisers are also gonna get multi-terrain select. Good physical feeling there on the eight-speed automatic transmission selector, dual cup holders, and then this is the stuff that's got me excited. So, permanent four-wheel drive. It's got a true center differential. It's not selectable between two high and four high. It's always in four-wheel drive high. Then you can push in. If we were in neutral, we could select four-wheel drive low. And then here, we've got our center differential lock and our buttons for the rear differential lock which is really, really cool, and then traction control off. So this is the panel that got me excited, specifically that one button is what should get you excited. Now as we lift up the armrest, good size storage bin there, really good size storage bin. Um, 
And the steering wheel, I love the steering wheel. Chunky, square, old school, right? Very 1980s, actually, in kind of its approach. Um, you got adaptive cruise, standard, standard Toyota safety assist two, uh, 3.0. Um, uh, so you got, you know, you, you know, blind spot monitoring, lane keeping, all of that's going to be standard in this vehicle. Um, and then across the board here, Cole, I'll take the camera for a sec. You can also see we've got the digital instrument cluster. It's flashing a lot, pre-production. Don't judge the quality of the vehicle based on the screen, but you've got your indicator for charge, eco and power, temperature control, fuel gauge on the right, um, steering wheel controls for volume, for tune, all of that here. And then on the left side of the steering wheel, we find buttons for backup assist, automatic high beams there, AC, it's got a 2400 watt inverter in this vehicle, fuel there, and then this little guy down here is what I'm really excited about, trailer brake controller. Now it's not as accessible as I'd like, I always like my trailer brake controllers typically on the right side of the wheel as they kind of went full GM on us by putting it down here on the left, but just having standard uh, trailer brake control is a really big deal. All right, Cole, let's go ahead and check out the rear seat. I've got about five minutes left with this vehicle, so super quick first look. As we step into the rear rear seat here, surprisingly flat floor for both driver and passenger side, um, and then a small hump in the middle for, of course, center mounted um, occupants. And then we got air vents located for the back seat, old school style air vents with the little Land Cruiser logo there. And then we've got du dual USB C's down there, and then your uh, your, your 12 volt socket. Let's see how does the cup holder feel? Good cup holders, look at that. Once again, this wool material, I'm really absolutely digging. Got a center mounted dome light in the rear here, so if you're out camping, that could be very, very useful. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I really am. Curious how the uh, seat mechanism works. It's got the fold and the tumble. Super interesting, look at that. That was kind of a surprise. So it's a, a fold and a tumble, or you can just do the fold. Very interesting, very old school. Lots of interesting mix of old school theories and, and new school approaches to this vehicle. I assume that fold and tumble too would be useful if we had the third row in other markets to get into the rear of the vehicle. All right, well, we've made our way to the Lexus booth here where we can take a look at the new GX550. And this is such a unique thing for Lexus. If you had told me 10 years ago, we'd be here at the Overland Expo looking at Lexus SUVs on off-road tires, I would have thought that you were crazy. But this Lexus 550 is based on the same basic platform as the Land Cruiser we were looking at earlier, but it does offer a bunch of nice features and luxuries that the Toyota doesn't have. Now let's start with the powertrain. So the Toyota comes standard, well the only engine available is the turbocharged four-cylinder with the hybrid system. The GX550 has a twin turbo V6. So you've gone from four cylinders to six cylinders, and they've added another turbo, and the power is up as well. So this vehicle makes 349 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. Now that is more power than the Toyota. But what's interesting is it's not that much more power. So especially the torque number is only up about 15 pound feet. Um, and you know, the, the horsepower number is up what, 20, 23 horsepower. So, you know, it's not that big of a difference. Now, of course, we're gonna have to see how the twin turbo V6 performs relative to the hybrid system in the Land Cruiser. Cause that of course is a big difference between the two and maybe off-road we're gonna see a big difference in torque modulation and power delivery. But at least on paper, the numbers are pretty similar. What else is pretty similar? They both have full-time four-wheel drive. They both have the center diff lock. They both have the rear diff lock. They can both be had with the stability bar disconnect in the front, right? So a lot of the same tech. Now, this model, of course, is the top trim off-road version, and it's got a set of the Toyo Open Country tires on it. Um, more aggressive, funny rubber than what you can get on the first edition Land Cruiser. So it's, it's kind of interesting that the luxury Lexus has better rubber than the, uh, than the Toyota, but obviously a lot of similar visual cues. The square, chunky, FJ Cruiser-like style mirrors. You've got this cool little step up there on the, uh, on the, the rear belt line for the rear, uh, rear windows. This one, of course, does have the roof rack, not quite to the same extent as what you find on that Toyota. And then making your way in the back, right, like the tail lights, fairly similar, but a little bit smaller. And then the trunk situation, also fairly similar. They are both two row vehicles, so front row, second row only. But see, in the back here of the Lexus, we got a little bit of additional storage. And then underneath, you'll find the, uh, the spare tire. 
But let's go ahead and kind of poke around, see what else uh, we can learn. So 10 speed automatic, that's another good point. Thank you, helpful reminder Lexus thing versus the eight speed in the, uh, in the Toyota. Interesting green inserts here, which I think are really, really funky on the Lexus. And then you do have the stepped up rear seating. Um, obviously plastic side step here, easy to get in and out of. Yeah, pretty good rear seat room, six feet tall, got enough room, lots of headroom as well. Man, that green, uh, green Alcantara, it's quite the look. Not sure if I love it or if I really think it's kind of silly, but um, let's take a quick peek at the interior here and see how that is in comparison. Now, obviously that first edition was locked. This one is unlocked, which is cool. First time ever sitting inside this GX, my dad went on the press launch, and first thing I'm noticing is the quality of materials, like the leather feels a lot nicer in the Lexus than what I was seeing in the Toyota. And then obviously something like the tech and the layout is a little bit more kind of bougie and modern. So huge screen integrated more vertically than horizontally like in the Toyota. You got wood trim here, wireless charger there. You've got your full-time four-wheel drive, uh, center of your diff lock. Buttons are a little different, but same kind of same kind of idea crawl control just like the toyota nicer steering wheel with the paddle shifters right nicer dashboard design small sunroof that's a little bit disappointing would like to see a full length sunroof on the lexus version um and then like the bronze accent so this is a nicer much more comfortable seat than the toyota as well i'm, I'm seeing that just off the bat it's a, it's a very very good seat to love the way that it kind of just supports you that feels really, really good. So the interior is a step up, right? But what is also gonna be a step up is pricing. Now we don't have, we don't have official pricing numbers. So Toyota says that the Land Cruiser is gonna start in the mid fifties. Um, Lexus has said this vehicle's pricing is gonna be in line with the, uh, the current one, but it's kind of my best guess would be mid sixties. So it's gonna be a pretty, pretty significantly more expensive vehicle than the Toyota. I'm also not sure like, once the aftermarket grabs a hold of these, what what's going to happen from a, a parts availability standpoint, right? Like, what's going to happen? Our lift kit's going to be interchangeable. Let's see. We got coil springs, looks like, on this on this vehicle. Let's get the camera in there best we can. Yeah, you know, standard coil springs, similar to the Toyota. Same platform, right? The, the 250 platform, but... Um, a little bit more plastic in the front. I mean, I wish Toyota would cut down on some of the plastic. I like the modularity, um, the multi-piece bumper design of the uh, Land Cruiser, which looks like it's gonna be easier to accept like accessory winches and that kind of thing. But the interior is much nicer in this vehicle. So if you are looking for, let's be honest, if you live with someone that wants a luxury experience every day that can also go off road, the, the Lexus is gonna offer that and the Toyota's not. This is another cool thing, which I just learned about. So this is the current GX. Right, and quite a visually different vehicle, very striking in its differences. V8, twin turbo V6. But Lexus has launched a new program. Let me get the official name here. I don't want to mess up the acronym. The um, Associated Accessory Products Program. And now through Lexus dealers, through their actually part catalog, you're going to be able to order um, lift kits and other components that are going to be warrantied and crash tested by Lexus to ensure that um, you know they're up to the same Lexus standards which are so high so I'm really interested in this and if you want a V8 right and you want the legendary LX sorry GX platform as it currently sits this is still a good option and they're surprisingly affordable right this is an old platform it's like 10 years old in the current body style but the good thing about that is you get 10 year old reliability 10 year old V8 technology and you know just good basic bones so Yes, the new GX550 is very cool, rear diff lock, sway bar disconnect, but this is still a very attractive platform. Now for me, comparing the new 550 to the Land Cruiser, for me it's gotta be Land Cruiser all the way. I just like the retro styling. I like the more affordable price point, and I'm excited about that hybrid system. Believe it or not, probably one of the few that's excited about it, but I think it's a cool idea. This is gonna be awesome. Excited to see what the community does with it, but for me, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be Land Cruiser all the way. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments section below. This has been Tommy with another episode. We'll see you in a future vid.